Hey everybody, welcome back to me reviewing movies. I got two movies to talk about today that I absolutely loved, and I hope you do too. So check them out. Uh, you know, always go to IMDb first, and see if you're interested, watch a trailer, and so forth. So let me just get right into it. Um, they're both uh, older films, but oldies but goodies, right? So uh, first up, I'm going to talk about The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Don't let that title throw you off. It's actually not as much of a horror film as the title suggests. It's the first ever courtroom drama horror film, which is like a really strange combination. Um, but this was so good. I actually saw this movie back in 2005 and um, in theaters, so it feels like forever ago. Uh, but I recently watched it for this, and I really, uh, I think it's a great film. The film is actually directed by Scott Derrickson, who went on to do The Day the Earth Stood Still remake uh, with Keanu Reeves and Jennifer Connelly. And a few years after that, he did a really gruesome horror film called Sinister. So uh, if you like... The Emily Rose, maybe you want to watch Mr. Derrickson's other work, right? Um, so, Exorcism of Emily Rose, which I'm actually not crazy about the title. I probably just would have called it Emily Rose. Because, like I said, it's like 75% of courtroom drama with some horror elements. And uh, the film follows Laura Linney, who is an attorney. And she's representing Tom Wilkinson, who's actually a really great actor. He plays a priest who pleads, uh, well, he says he's innocent, but he's brought up on charges for, you know, being, being responsible for the death of this college girl named Emily Rose, played by Jennifer Carpenter, who's actually known uh, for the quarantine horror film from 2008. And you might know her from the Dexter TV show. She played Dexter's sister. She's a great actress, and she's great in this. So anyway, he is a priest who... Uh, you know, the family priest, and she goes off to college, and she weird stuff starts happening to her. She starts to get possessed, but, uh, you know, the exorcism, you know, results in her death. This is not a spoiler. And he's brought up on charges for, uh, you know, is he responsible? Once the priest is brought up on charges, it is Laura Linney's turn to defend him and really present this wild case of should he be blamed for her death? Was she really possessed? Was she epileptic? Uh, that's something the movie brings up. And it's a really interesting trial um, because we have the prosecution who is presenting this case saying, no, Emily was not possessed. She was ep epileptic and she had seizures and all this, you know, exorcism church stuff is a bunch of nonsense and it is not the reality. But um, you watch the film and you get to judge for yourself. What I really liked about the film is that in the end, you really are left to um, decide what is the reality? What do I believe? And I think there are moments in the film from both the prosecution and the defense. Um, you know, you could side with both of them. You may disagree with both of them. I find myself going back and forth because it's just that interesting of a movie. And um, like I said, do not let the exorcism, you know, word in the title throw you off and turn you off. Um, there are moments in the film that are scary and freaky, but it's really about the trial and the drama of the courtroom. And we start to see that drama in the courtroom play into Laura Linney's life. You know, she she goes home at night and she's haunted by the case. But no, there's not really ghosts in her apartment or anything. So Exorcism of Emily Rose directed by Scott Derrickson. It's from 2005. I highly recommend it if you are into, let's say, Law and Order meets The Exorcist. Um, we know there's a slew of possession films out there, and the majority of them are pretty bad. We all know The Exorcist is the original and the best. In my opinion, this is probably the best uh, possession film since the original 1973 Exorcist, so definitely check that out. And uh, next up, I actually have a completely different movie from uh, Emily Rose. It's called Grave of the Fireflies from 1988. This is actually a Japanese animation film. It's pretty heavy material. The film focuses on a brother and sister. The sister's little, the brother's older, trying to survive in Japan during World War II when the bomb is dropped. And um, it's a survival story. Um, you know, they are just one day in their, their home and 
the bombs obviously start dropping and they have to deal with, well, what comes next? How does this affect my family? Uh, are we going to survive? So it is a survival story and it's a really great one. Um, what I appreciated about this film was the connection between the brother and sister. I really thought, even though, you know, he's not a real person, it's a, it's an animated character. Um, awesome character written really well and the kind of heavy stuff that falls in his plate that he has to deal with about you know um you know my loved ones around me are dying and um you know my house is no more it's it's really sad stuff and the film does throw in a anti-war message uh, even though the director has said that was not his intention and he doesn't think the film is like that i personally think it is um, but it's really a story about a brother and sister and um, the journey itself is fascinating how they get from point A to B. It's definitely a tearjerker. It's not a happy-go-lucky film even though there are plenty of moments where the brother and sister are laughing and enjoying themselves like as much as they can during this you know nightmare, this uh, survival struggle. Um, I really do recommend it, especially if you are into other animated films like Spirited Away. Um, that's another great film, but definitely recommend Grave of the Fireflies. Uh, you do get engrossed in the characters, you get engrossed in the story, and the things that they have to endure along the way are heartbreaking. So uh, <laughs> having said that, uh, I think it's a great movie. I really do recommend it.